coming upon a shooting with multiple victims. I do not know what I'm driving into. Oh, well, actually, I can't even suspect because what I've been hearing from the scanner is we'll find some police officer on the perimeter, maybe. and ask them where they want me to be with the big wide perimeter. Let me try this one. Okay, um, you doing? Uh, I got a headache and uh, I ain't getting enough sleep. I slept but for whatever reason I I don't feel like I slept well so um, which is bad because we're expecting heavy weather tomorrow and I gotta be doing a lot of driving in the morning so I don't know. I might get a chance to be able to get some sleep 
this evening, my nap, but uh, yeah, I'm going to attempt to get a steamer and, and communicate and figure out what's going on, but uh, yeah, we got some uh, snow maybe, they're predicting one to three inches, and then snow on Sunday, I guess, which is a big sporting event here in Kansas City Sunday so oh boy plus we got the Filipino dance the Lunar New Year and people are concerned because <clears throat> the hate that's been going around that results in <clears throat> it's in combination with mental illness and and heavy-duty weaponry in the hands of people who are not mentally fit is resulting in um, more dead people and uh, and this time around it seems like the target are people of Asian descent and so there's a concern that this event going on may need some extra security since it's the celebration of Chinese New Year. The first shooting that happened in California about, what, two days ago or so was a celebration of Chinese New Year, so people are concerned about that. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Well, I, I have an idea what's going on. I mean, it's obvious. It's easier to get a gun in the United States than it is to get good mental health care, or any mental health care for that matter. I mean, look at all the homeless people. Most of that is mental illness, usually combined with self-medication. And uh, yeah, we got a real problem in this country and we have a bunch of dodos in Washington who will not address it. But this is the view of my world so far tonight. You know, we're having this errand that we have to run, and I'm going to go get a steamer. But uh, this is what it looks like in Kansas City right now before the snow comes in, and it looks like uh, it's getting ready to come in pretty soon. It's not really precipitating yet, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's ooh, excuse me, pretty busy for a, a Tuesday night. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna <clears throat> keep this going until we get to to chessboard. I'm not gonna just tread water and talk about nonsense. But uh, it's kind of a informal tour of. Broadway in Kansas City and I'm still suffering from stuffiness but I don't have as bad a all the other symptoms I don't know maybe I woke up with a headache so maybe maybe I hope not I hope not I'm not getting coming down with something worse than what I have and here we are steamer and of course, people are right on my tail, which makes it hard to maneuver. So I have to slow way down so that I can maneuver properly. Or people could just back off and be patient. Oh, here we are. Steamer. Not too bad tonight.
you know when <coughs> the big news, I guess, is that it snowed. Snow! I do that every time. <laughs> and, uh, not much. One to three inches, I guess. I don't know. I mean, enough to make the road slippery. But, there was one spectacular crash a Prius somehow got wedged underneath the semi and the semi driver didn't know it and kept driving and drug her for a, the woman for about 8 miles apparently she's in the hospital she survived but I don't know how bad off she is and uh, you know we drove around all morning there were some power outages and stuff and my uh, Adam X cast worked beautifully. So I'm pretty happy with that. There's not much to really worry about with that. Uh, there's a few minor bugs, but that doesn't have anything to do with the X cast, it has something to do with the camera I need to fix. But so, yeah, that's positive. And uh, the snow is uh, actually really beautiful. Big, white, fluffy, wet, heavy. Not, well, <laughs> not fluffy if it's wet. But it's a big, white, heavy snow that's in the tree branches, making the trees look really pretty. So, and uh, so on with uh, the rest of the week. Woo! -hoo! It's been a long morning this morning, so let's chillax over a hot drink of uh, coffee. I don't know, it's not looking open. There's nobody inside at least. Mm -hmm. oh, it's open. <laughs> Look at the art. Mm, art. So far, all is quiet on the western front, except for places where construction has the cones out in the middle of the road. It is very cold today, like 21 degrees, 19 degrees according to the weather service. So I don't expect too many shenanigans today. Oh man person needs a jacket. Yeah, after yesterday's winter snow, we got the cold blast coming in. And uh, so, you know, I'm doing my cruise through Westport to see what the rest of the night will be like. Sort of a random sample if it's wild in Westport. It might be wild all over the city. 
and uh, pretty much what I expect here. People are all inside keeping warm. Sometimes on Thursdays, the uh, the day before, you know, like uh, Thursday mornings, but definitely Friday mornings, there's a lot of people that hang out here. But not when it's this cold, I don't think. Wherever there's water, it's frozen. So if you hit a patch of ice while you're driving, even if the roads are dry, you can, you can lose control pretty quickly. I have been off and on with a nasal upper respiratory thing since Thanksgiving. And it's just gotten way old. hasn't been a day when I haven't suffered from something. Stuffy nose, runny nose, sneezing, congestion. going on in Westport tonight. Sometimes on this end up here, I don't even think it really depends on the weather. There's something that goes on in this area mainly this this part of the street in this parking lot over here where we get a lot of shooting calls I suspect I know what it is but I'm not gonna I'm not going to uh, speculate officially If you talk to me in person off the record, I'd probably tell you what I think, and you probably agree with me if you know this area at all. This parking lot could be trouble, and cops get called to this parking lot a lot over violence and shootings and stuff. And Definitely, this parking lot over here. And no matter what the weather, people like to go out to bars for whatever reason. They like to dress up for it. And that can be quite bad for you, but. I'm nobody's mother, so. Anyway, that's the penny tour of Dead Westport at night. Back here again. Steamer for hot chocolate. Admire the art. At the scene of a barn fire here in Grandview, the firefighter said it's a, not really a big deal. It's way back there and it's very muddy and 
So they're just letting it burn itself out. Um, and they're going to keep an eye on it. They're not going to uh, risk the health and safety of firefighters trying to put it out. And there's also a dump back here. They've had a lot of problems with it. So they think uh, um, it's probably vagrants have started these fires. And, you know, in many ways, it's probably just to let it demolish itself and get rid of the hazard. I know we can't see it out there. It's pretty dark, but it's just a little fire, really, <clears throat> and some smoke. So. arrested I don't know what for it's a woman and uh, I don't know probably fighting but don't quote me on that of course <laughs> This car needs an all change. Here's where I'll get my all changed. Hopefully. Kansas it used to be its own little town, the town of Rosedale. A lot of these little towns joined together to form one large city, Kansas City, Kansas. But uh, as the town grew and aged, I don't think it really benefited a lot of these little towns very much. You know, you went from kind of small town life to urban life with the problems. He just passed a building that we once looked at. I wish we could have bought it. The missus didn't like it. It wasn't a, uh, 
uh, typical house. But I had a nice apartment and two apartments on the second floor and an office and a downstairs space. And we're stopped for a train. Here's the Vox Theater. They're open for like a, um, a rental space, hall kind of deal. Oh, looks like we got to the end of the train here. Rosedale leads into Southwest Traffic Way, which is a nice, uh, not traffic way. I get those two confused. A lot of people do. It's because they got two, two roads called Southwest fairly close together. One is Southwest Traffic Way and one is Southwest Boulevard. Oh, and this is also, uh, I believe, the Jefferson Highway, the Kansas branch of the Jefferson Highway. An auto tra trail route that preceded the uh, numbered highway system in 19, that came into being in 1926. Before that, a lot of highways were named and were set up and run by associations it had a lot to do with the good roads movement the federal government was slow to act on that and it took a uh, took a general traveling across the United States and realizing how bad this country's road systems were and uh, how that we would be at a disadvantage if uh, there was a uh, war. Also, uh, I believe that the same general traveled across the United or traveled across Germany was impressed by the autobahns and and uh, that led to the interstate highway system for better for worse. This is Southwest Boulevard. I like to travel the back roads. It's a slower pace. Sometimes you get stuck up in traffic jams, but for the most part, you get to see America. <coughs> People living and working, and lots of more interesting things to see. The saying goes that if you don't want to see America, travel the interstates. That is very true because when we travel the interstates, are pretty boring, pretty monotonous. Some interstates are beautiful when they travel through beautiful scenery, but for the most part, when you're not traveling through beautiful scenery, you're just missing this country and its people. So. As the saying goes, travel America's back roads, it's where you'll find us. It's Rosedale Barbecue over there. They're a pretty good barbecue joint. This place has a lot of good Mexican restaurants. This, this uh, road leads right into downtown Kansas City. And, uh, Kind of a Route 66-esque way of journeying into Kansas City. Unfortunately, I can vetch a lot about this. A lot of these cities are very proud of their red lights. They could use some engineering on these light systems. But I travel a lot overnight and when I'm stopped at a red light and I'm the only car there, it's a little ridiculous. Especially the ones that never turn green. And you the only way the only way to do it legally if you can is make a right turn, but quite often people just get fed up and go through them, make sure the way is clear and go through them. It's unfortunate. 
lately with all the construction and stuff, a lot of lights are really messed up. I wish the mayors of these cities could hear this because it really wastes a lot of time and fuel and energy. I'm on my way to town. Oh, here we go. We crossed right into the state of Missouri from the state of Kansas. Over on the left is a memorial to firefighters that died, died when a, a gas station caught fire and blew up in their faces in the 1950s, 1957. Um, going to town topic. An iconic little diner. There's two of them about what, three blocks from each other? They're really, I think, the only two left now. I mean, look at this urban view. It's very, uh, this is a photo, this is a photograph, and then you have an airplane. <coughs> has a uh, iconic sign for actually a coffee roaster, Kansas City Coffee Roaster, or the roastery, a DC-3, it's their symbol. I believe because the owner, in the search of uh, coffee beans to buy, actually traveled on some of those planes in Central America and South America. I am still suffering. I keep complaining about this for this head cold that I've had since November. Here is uh, Boulevard Brewery. Kansas City originated brewer. It used to be a local brewer, but it's, like a lot of things, it's been taken over by a company from Belgium, a big company. The biggest uh, beer company in the world, I think. And this is what they call the West Side, which is uh, a Hispanic neighborhood that's really good, authentic Mexican food. Again, another traffic light. Let's see how long this one takes. Oh, not long at all. It's already changing. It's not as bad during the day, except that the lights are timed very poorly to where you can't get through downtown without hitting every red light like this for instance and uh, that's a matter of uh, engineering of studying lights and the patterns and setting them so that the main arteries of traffic can get through unfortunately when I sat in on a Lawrence Kansas City meeting once they discussed that they talked about how expensive it is just to study it The topic. We are back at this. This is my setup. We're doing uh, Sinai Tala is making a guest appearance at Chinese New Year. performance of our Lunar New Year celebration is presented by PNC Bank. I am Sarah Heitschmiedler. I'm the Senior Manager for Community Programs here at the Nelson Atkins. And we are delighted to have such a great turnout 
for our first in-person New Year celebration since 2020. So we're so happy to be back with live events here. Uh, and we are about to experience our, uh, our wonderful new group. They have not performed for us uh, yet here um, at this event, so we're in for a real treat. It's a Singag Tala Performing Arts Group, and uh, we have showcased several different countries and their Lunar New Year traditions this year, including China, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. And so in this spirit, it's my pleasure to introduce the Sing Sinag Tala Performing Arts Troupe here to perform popular <laughs> Filipino dances. Thank you very much for uh, including the Philippines in the celebration of Lunar New Year. This is, although uh, Sarah mentioned that uh, this is the first time that uh, we have participated in the uh, L Lunar Year Festival, we were here in this stage in November to celebrate the Sinag Taula's 50th year anniversary. I am Lillian Pardo. Uh, I'm the executive director of the Sinag Taula Performing Arts Troupe. It is the cultural arm of the Filipino Association of Greater Kansas City. The repertoire of uh, our folk dances reflect the historical influences and the regional differences of the country. It is composed of 7,100 islands, um, plus or minus, depending on the floods or <laughs> ebbing tide. But you'll be delighted to know that we will travel from the representation from the northern part of the Philippines to the southern part of the Philippines, influenced by their culture. And a very strong Spanish influence because we were under 400 years of Spanish influence. So you will see the difference in, in their costumes and the music. Um, so now, without um, much further ado, this is uh, the Sinag Tala Performing Arts Troupe representing the Filipino Cultural Center, the Filipino Association of Greater Kansas City. The first part, of, the first dance represents the northern part of the Philippines. There is a group of uh, indigenous uh, tribes that uh, represent the, the Ifugao or the Igorot uh, group of people. So ladies and gentlemen, the first part of the performance it represents the northern part of the Cordillera Mountains. Ladies and gentlemen, the Igorot dance. influence altogether. I told you earlier that we were under the Spanish influence and almost four, cent four centuries uh, brought uh, European influences, dance, mazurkas, otas that we see today. Um, it also brought uh, the, the Catholic religion and we, and we are the uh, only country in, in Asia that is predominantly Roman Catholic, about 85% of the population. To preserve the cultural influences growing up in Kansas City, in um, 1977, we established a younger group called the Filipinets, or, or Little Filipinos. They will charm you with their rendition of the mazurka, a Spanish influence dance. Ladies and gentlemen, the Filipinets in mazurka. <laughs> of our dance troupe, you will see that some of the adult dancers started as Filipinas. So they have to work their way up and familiarize themselves with the Filipino culture. And this is one way of doing it. Uh, continuing on with the Spanish influence dances, the Jota is a very lively dance and there are several versions of Jota depending on what part of the country it comes from. So Jota Moncadena, which is our next dance, it comes from the town of Moncada Tarlac, if you're familiar with the Philippines. 
and uh, it is uh, dance. It is uh, they use uh, bamboo castanets uh, for their dance in this Hota Moncadena. Ladies and gentlemen, Hota Moncadena. <laughs> this particular hota. Uh, you know, tropical Philippines needs a lot of umbrellas and parasols. So young ladies parade themselves, you know, in their best finery, carrying their beautiful parasols. So young ladies in the parasol dance. <laughs> The segment, the final segment is called Rural Dances, uh, which is a reflection of festivals that are held in the Philippines. Because it's a Catholic country, every town or city has a patron saint that they celebrate during their birthdays. So uh, Binasuan is one of several um, celebration during a good harvest, and it requires um, balancing three classes. <laughs> to continue on with the rural celebration of a festival representative of any town is Kalatong. Kalatong is um, refers to the instrument or the bamboo that hangs in the uh, neck of the male dancers and they make a lot of noise supposedly to drive bad spirits away and to bring good luck. It's also a uh, dance with uh, ladies who carry um, um, headgear with a lot of flowers for the celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, Kalatong. <laughs> referred to as the bamboo dance or the tinikling, which is really named after the tickling bird that uh, uh, fly from uh, hop and skip from rice paddies to another. So the tinikling is sometimes referred to as the Philippine national dance. It gained its uh, notoriety, I guess, or importance uh, when it was featured many years ago. And I'm going to show my age here during the Ed Sullivan <laughs> show many years ago. It's CBS. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the tinically. 